Let's talk about the coronary arteries. We talked about arteries, veins, capillaries, blood vessels, right? Now I want to talk about the coronary arteries. They're important. Why? Because without them, without their good health, you probably can't live, okay? So your heart is like this. The coronary arteries lay over it. Your heart pumps the blood for the whole body, right? Of course it does. You think you got it bad? Look, think about your heart. It doesn't even get a 10 minute break. It takes a 10 minute break and you're dead. Unless you're on a bypass machine, but anyway. Your coronary arteries feed your heart muscle. Your heart muscle, the only way it gets fed is from these coronary arteries, okay? Your poor heart. It pumps the blood for the whole body, but it doesn't get to use any of it. So all the blood that's going through the chambers of the heart, the heart doesn't use it. The heart gets its nutrients from these coronary arteries that lay around it. That's how the heart muscle gets fed. Imagine you're working at this gorgeous, huge buffet and you can't even have a french fry. Nope. That's what the heart has. It pumps the blood for the whole body through its chambers, but it doesn't use it. It has to use the coronary arteries. So the health of your coronary arteries is extremely important. Make sense? So think about this. If your heart just gets fed by your coronary arteries, what happens when your coronary arteries are full of fat, plaque, you know, cholesterol, you name it. So if you look inside one of your arteries like this, lots of times they get narrowed because of fat and plaque and so forth. Yep, there's that double cheeseburger you had to have. Oh, you supersized it, didn't you? Mm-hmm. And you like donuts. Oh, you decided not to work out today. Mm-hmm. The American lifestyle. And this is what we have. So now, when the heart pushes the blood and the blood is forced through, can you see how it's restricted? How it's narrower? That's going to make the pressure go up. And chances are, it's not just like that in your heart. Chances are, it's like that all over your body. If the heart is not getting enough oxygen, nutrition, blood flow, it's going to cramp up. It's going to, it's going to have pain. Angina, angina pectoris, chest pain. That's what nitro does. It opens up those blood vessels so more blood can fit through, giving the heart more oxygen so it can keep up with everything. This is why when you gain weight, when you're obese, the heart has to be harder to push all that blood and nutrients around to your body. And it's difficult for it because now the heart has to be fed more. The heart has to be fed more. Meanwhile, while all those coronary arteries are getting all clogged up. Not a good situation. Can you see that? So what happens when it gets into a narrowed place, the blood tends to swirl like that. Ever make a snowball? Of course you did. Well, most of us. You start just with a little and it rolls and it gets bigger and bigger. That's how blood clots start. Mm -hmm. And can you see how if a clot got formed and it came through here and got stuck, that it can't get downstream to feed the rest of the tissues? Or perhaps a piece of this comes off and you have an embolus. You have a chunk of fat that comes off and gets stuck in there. Either way, whether it's a blood clot, thrombosis, or an embolus, that same thing happens. Now, can you imagine if it happened right here? All this whole area would be affected, right? Chances are things aren't going to look up for you. Hopefully, you're where people know what to do and they can take action quickly. If it were to happen right here, it may only cause a small amount of damage. 
but any amount of damage in the heart is bad. Once the heart is damaged, then you have congestive heart failure. And when you have heart failure, lots of stuff can go wrong. You know, when my kids were real little, I, I got one of those Doughboy above ground pools, those metal ones. And I remember, um, actually I bought it used because you know I'm cheap. So anyway, um, I was looking into what I needed for it. You know, is the filter good? Is the pump good? And I went in to talk to a pool place about it. And he asked about our family and what we had, you know, how many kids and how often it was going to get used. And he said, you might want to upgrade that pump to a bigger pump. And I said, well, the pump that I bought, you know, it worked for these people for two years when they owned it. So surely it'll work for me. He was right and I should have upgraded to a bigger pump because I ended up spending more on chemicals because the pump, think of it like your heart, a pool pump, it has to push that water through the filter to clean it, okay? It has to be strong enough to push that water through the filter to clean the water. Your heart is just like a pool pump. It has to push the blood through the kidneys to filter out that blood. And if it can't do that well enough and keep up with the demands of the body, all that fluid gets backed up. There's other factors at play here as well, but just that one factor, if you can get that in your mind, then you can really maybe make sense of CHF. So if it can't push it through, then it backs up. And what do you see? Don't you see those big puffy ankles? Of course you do. Edema. Lower, lower extremity edema because of gravity. You're going to have that edema in the ankles. Or left-sided heart failure, you might get congestion in the lungs, wet lungs because of everything backing up. Understand? That's why Gladys, when she's up all day, she has CHF and she's up all day running around or in her wheelchair, right? She takes Lasix, your diuretic in the morning. She urinates in the morning. And then after that, she's up the rest of the day going to activities, bingo, whatever's going on. And by the afternoon, she doesn't urinate maybe from one o'clock to maybe she urinates once between one and seven. She goes to bed at eight. She got great big swollen up ankles, all right? And then she lays down in bed. Well, look, here's her heart, here's her kidneys, here's her ankles. Now it's all on the same level. Now she's going to start urinating, urinating, urinating. Because now you don't have gravity at play. And the heart doesn't have to work so hard to pump all this through. So that's CHF in a nutshell. And that's the importance of the coronary arteries in a nutshell there for you.